So you know how you go to New York and you get that New York style pizza, right? Or you can go to Chicago and get Chicago style or Detroit. I mean, they all have their pizzas. Why doesn't Georgia have a pizza? Well, today we're gonna take care of that. We are making a Georgia peach pizza pie. Oh yeah, how? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Bigfoot cooking. Now to put this whole thing together, there's gonna be a pretty heavy peach influence because well, Georgia's kind of known for their peaches, so let's go ahead and peach it up. We're gonna start out with our ingredients. That's right, we're gonna do, to make the crust, usually you mix flour and water and that's kind of how you get your dough going. Well, in this case, we're gonna use peach juice instead of the water. That's right, we're, we're infusing this whole thing with a peach flavor. Oh, don't turn off yet, wait till you get a bite of this. Now, I've got about a cup and a half of peach juice. Now after the peach juice, we've got about a tablespoon, maybe a touch more of yeast to go into it. We won't need to add sugar for it this time because, well, there's enough sugar in the peach juice to wake up the yeast. And then for the big part of the crust, we've got four cups of flour. Now with the flour, you really wanna try to use the bread flour, but if you've got all purpose, you're still gonna get a really good pizza. But like I say, four cups of flour, we've got a tablespoon of salt, we've got three tablespoons of milk powder. Now, if you don't have milk powder, it's okay. You can make it without it, but with the milk powder, it gives it a little, it just, it helps the crust out some to get a little, I mean, almost a Pizza Hut style. You know, it's, it's a little more to it. So if you've got it, I really recommend you throw it in and a little bit of olive oil. That way it keeps the crust from drying out. Now for the sauce that we're gonna put on it, because, oh yeah, this is a deep dish pizza. That's right, we're not doing thin crust, we're not doing none of that. We in the South, we're here to eat, so we gotta have a good, thick, deep dish crust for it. And we're gonna use a white sauce instead of your traditional red. So for the white sauce, I've got right here, one cup of whipping cream. Now you could use half and half, but the whipping cream is just, again, it richens it up a little bit more. We're gonna do a half a stick of butter, we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of garlic, or you could use fresh if you wanted, but at least with the powder, you know, at least a quarter. And then a cup and a half of Parmesan. That together is gonna make the, 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 the white goodness to go on it. And then for the toppings, well, of course we've got peaches. Come on, again, we're dealing with Georgia. So we're gonna fry up some peaches. We've got brisket, chicken, bacon, and Vidalia onion. That's right. This is going to be a pizza worth writing home to mama for, I'm telling you. So let's get started by waking up the yeast because, well, they've got the biggest part of this job to do. I think with all of that going on, I forgot to mention the mozzarella is also the cheese of choice to coat this lovely pizza with. So now we've got our peach juice here. Again, we shouldn't need to add any sugar to it because the peach is pretty sweet on its own. So we're gonna wake up our yeasties here by just giving them a a bath in peach juice. And I tell you what, they should be pretty happy because I mean, peach juice is pretty good. So come on guys, let's get to the party. Now I did want to mention, make sure you don't take this straight out of the fridge because it would be too cold and don't heat it up in the microwave because then you might have it too hot. So, well, I guess you could heat it in the microwave, just not very much. Again, you want this just about 95, 100 degrees. You really don't want it any hotter because you don't want to kill your yeast or freeze them out. So now that we got those guys cooperating, let's go ahead and pull over our frying pan here and let's get us some fried peaches going. Little light, little, oh, I don't know if you guys watched my other episode, but this is one of the cast iron that I brought back to life. Yeah, these things were horrible looking before I started. And I mean, you look at it now, ooh, they're ready to cook a good meal. So we are definitely get them started. So let's, let's get our butter melted in here and then we'll pop in some peaches. All right, butter's melted in. Now our peaches are still frozen. I actually want them pretty solid because I want them to stay together through this. So splish splash, they're taking a bath. As you can see, we've got these guys just lightly fried. Like I said, I don't wanna like super caramelize them. I mean, we're gonna do that to the onions, but for this, I just wanna add a touch of color to them and that way they'll, they'll stay together a little better as we put them on the pizza. So out they come 
And now let's prep the onions. All right, we're gonna make us some veggie donuts. We're just gonna trim the top off of it, trim the bottom off of it. Go ahead and take this first layer of skin off of it. Now I wish I could say these are absolutely true Vidalia onions because to be a Vidalia onion has to be grown in a certain part of Georgia, the state, not the country. And right now, well, it's not the right time, but these are sweet onions, same species, but they're grown in a different spot. So that's why they can't be called Vidalia. But for now, we're gonna call them Vidalia. So we're just gonna trim these guys up about maybe half-ish, quarter-ish inch thick. Tell you what, gripping them sometimes without cutting your hand gets a little scary. All right, now let's get our frying pan back over here, warm it back up, and drop these guys in. We're gonna give it a shot of peach here. Ooh, look at that. All right, got the deglazing done, I guess you'd say the juice boiled off and our onions are nice and floppy and caramelizing and all that good stuff. So we'll pull them off, set them to the side. Ooh, look at there, they kind of pretty. Never had peachy onions before, have you? Let's see, let's set this off and now let's get to making some of the dough. Tell you what, my yeast is a little slower starting than I wanted it to do. So I went ahead and added a, a half a tablespoon-ish, you know, a spoonful of sugar to the mix to kind of kickstart it because, you know, I'm kind of surprised. I figured there'd be plenty enough sugar in that drink to, to make that yeast go woohoo, but nope. It just kind of was like, hey, we're here to party. Well, we're gonna make it rave. So I added the sugar to that. So while we're waiting on that to really get a good active yeast, let's go ahead and make our white sauce for the top. Now I've got my Parmesan here, so we're gonna go ahead and run it through here and we are gonna get us a cup and a half of it. So let the party begin. All right, guess that one pretty good. Once I clean it all up, I'll have a little bit more, but I mean, what can go wrong with more cheese, right? All right, to begin this, I'm gonna drop in my half a stick of butter and we'll get it melted in there. You know, this is very similar to the way you make Alfredo sauce. So just saying, if you can do this, you can do Alfredo. Let's see, we'll get our butter over here, start a little stir and pour in our liquefaction here. A little whipping cream never hurt nobody. And now I'm just gonna take by the handful and slowly put this in, get our Parmesan cheese in here. Don't do it all at once because then you get lumps and it's harder to get it to mix in. This way, take your time a little bit. And since we shredded it fresh, it doesn't have any of the potato starches or modifiers or anything. It mixes so much better this way. And of course, don't forget your little bit of garlic powder here. Or if you wanted to, you could add yourself a fresh garlic as well. Just depends on what you got in the kitchen. Now be careful on this too, because if you're not paying attention to this and stirring it regular, it's gonna scald or burn or whatever you wanna call it, and then you gotta do it again. All right, we got the flame off on this, so let's set it to the side. I'll let it cool down over here, and now it's time for the crust. Oh, the dough, the dough, the dough. Dosey -si dough, dough. All right, well, I don't know if you can tell from there, but I finally got me a good little bit of bubbles on top, so our yeast is woke up and getting all yeasty. Let's go ahead and mix this in, and pour it right into the bottom. All oh, them guys are ready to party. We're gonna take our flour, set it in the mixer. Not quite all at once, but all at once. If you did just a straight dump, you'd have a big old dust cloud of powder coming out. And we'll turn this on slow for a minute to let these guys mix up some. All right, so now let's add our salt to it, our milk powder, and then a little touch of olive oil. Now we're just gonna give this a few minutes to go round and round and round the world. Ooh, look at that guy go. I tell you what, let's see. Yep, dough is just barely sticky. I'm gonna take and put me just a little bit here on the workspace, that way it won't stick to it. Dust the hands a little. Let's go ahead and do us a, uh, a quick knead to it. Yes, I know the machine will do it, but I just feel better doing it by hand, you know? Just a little. 
push and roll, push and roll, getting all these glutens in here nice and happy. Because I want this here peachy pizza to be so daggum peachy, it's peachy good. All right, now we're just gonna kind of work the outside to the inside, bundle it up a little bit. And once we have ourselves a nice pretty little ball here, I'm gonna go ahead and set it back in here. Guess I should have took this off first, huh? All right, we'll roll it again. I ain't scared. All right, set you right down in there. Put the lid on it. We're gonna let this rest for about 20 minutes or till it starts to double up. You know, they say double in size, but basically till that gets nice and big and then we're gonna pull it out, poof it down and we're gonna start on the pans of the pan pizza. But we've given this guy about an hour to rise up and get all yeastified and everything. So let's put a little flour down, flour on the hands and let's see how our dough looks. Come on out of here. Oh yeah. Plop. Look at there. Looks so nice. So nice indeed. Let's go ahead and we'll probably go ahead and cut this into fourths. I think that will do about right because I don't need all this dough for one pizza. Let's see if we can work this out into our pan. See, this is where I wish I had the skill of some of those master pizzeria guys where they can just flip it up in the air. Me? I'll just be happy if I don't tear this in half. Matter of fact, let me take my watch off before it grabs a hold of pizza and then tries to cut it. Whee! Yeah, that's about as good as it gets, guys. <laughs> now what I'm trying to do is stretch this dough out to the size of this cast iron pot right here, or frying pan. I guess it's not really a pot, it's a, more of a frying pan. But we're trying to get our dough the same size as that. So that way, we just drop this right in and well, that's what we're cooking it in anyway, right? We're gonna try it and see if we're good. I hope so. Because again, I am not the master of this. Knowing how to do it and being really good at it are two different things. All right, we've got ourselves our dough nicely set in the bottom. Now we're gonna take our white sauce, which as you can see now that it's cooled, has gotten a lot thicker. So we're gonna take the white sauce and smear it on here and get a good little coating. And I'm gonna go just about edge to edge on this. Oh, that looks so nice. Now let's put some cheese on it. We're just gonna take our freshly shredded mozzarella because, well, to me, shredding it like right before you use it is so much better. You can use the stuff in the pack. You can use the store-bought stuff, but they put something on the cheese to keep it from like binding up when it's in the package. And well, it, it, I don't know. I think you get a better taste and a better stretch if you shred it yourself. But you know, I am a little opinionated in this. All right, now we're gonna take our brisket and we're just gonna place it in a few strategically wherever it falls places. I'm not trying to make this a garbage pizza where there's just everything in the world on it. We're just trying to make sure that each slice you get a little bit of something that, you know, changes from bite to bite. So that way, you know, this one had a little more brisket on it. The next one's going to have a little more chicken. Now, the reason why we're putting chicken on this is Gainesville, Georgia is the poultry capital of the world. And since, well, more chicken comes through there than any other place, well, it seemed right that a Georgia pizza should have chicken on it. Now, bacon, because, well, I mean, come on, this is the South. We like bacon on everything. I think bacon could cure just about every disease known to man if you just applied enough of it, except maybe heart disease. We won't talk about that one. All right, now we're gonna take our almost Vidalia onions that have been peach glazed and set these guys on here. Give them a happy location just all over the place. And since they're already softened, you ain't got to worry about them being too crunchy. And now for the main event, our semi-fried peaches. We're just going to set these guys right between every onion that we placed on here. Let's see. We'll even set one in the middle just for the, the stand-up look of it. All right. And there we have it. Now, I'm also gonna be cooking these in the smoker, but you could put them in the oven. Either way is fine, but 
I'm just, I'm loving the fact that my smoker will actually cook pizza and not like overkill it with a, you know, a really heavy smoke flavor because it's so hot at that point, you're not smoking, you're cooking. Yes, you can use it as an oven. So let me slide this guy outside into the smoker at 425 degrees for roughly 12 to 15 minutes. We'll see how long it takes, but I'm thinking that right there should set it just about right. So hold on, let me go do that. All right, now while that's going on, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make a few personal pan pizzas. That's right, all of this cast iron, I don't know if you guys caught the show where I took this and restored it, but oh, it was rough looking. I mean, I'll, I'll put a link up here for the show and I'll even put it on the end of this one. So that way you guys can see what I started with. I mean, I had, I had some rough looking cast iron when I began, but while we're putting these together, I wanna to talk to you about a little something. See, when I was at the store the other day, actually ran into a fan of the show. She said she was subscribed and everything, which I do appreciate. But she, she was telling me that she was like falling on some hard times. I mean, her and her family of six were having to stay in a hotel room for a little while because they, they were just down in their luck. Down. I mean, again, I don't want to throw her, her business out there, but she's basically having a rough time in life. And, you know, the funny thing it was, if I wouldn't have had a conversation with her, if I wouldn't have, you know, just took a few minutes to say, hey, how you doing? Would have never known her, her smile, her personality. I mean, you thought she was just another day in life, you know? So I kind of say all this to point out that you really, you never know what somebody's going through in their life. You never know if they've got it bad, if they've got it good, if they're just smiling because it seems to be the right time. Sometimes, you know, we all just need to stop and look at one another and say, hey, how you doing? You know, just check on your friend, check on your family, see how they're doing, because sometimes they just kind of need a little what's up. So anyway, while while that's out there still cooking, like I say, let me prep these three right here real quick. So that way we got personal pan pizzas to go with our big pan pizza. The other one should be ready. So let me see if I can swap these out now. Ooh, look at there. Right off the smoker and just got that little sizzle sound going on and got the smell and everything. This is gonna be awesome. Now, I am gonna give this because patience is not my virtue. I'm gonna give this about 15 minutes. That way, this will get done, it'll cool down. And the other little guys, well, they should be coming out by then. So that way we got the whole family of peach pizza here when we, when we cut these guys into. Oh, this is gonna be a good, good dinner. You know, there are some things about America I just don't understand. Take for example, Georgia. They call it the peach state, but it's number three in peach production. I mean, they made, oh, 24,000 tons of peaches. And I mean, that sounds like a lot, but South Carolina made 69,000 tons of peaches and they are number two. And who's number one, you ask? California at a whopping 475,000 tons of peaches. Now, Georgia is number one in chickens. They actually make 50 times as much on chicken than peaches. Maybe they should call this the chicken state. I don't know. They just call me Benson. Hey, and here we have it. Our personal pan pizzas and our pan pan pizza. All of them made on the smoker. All of them made out of Georgia peaches. And well, let's find out if all of them are delicious. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go a little nostalgic because I remember the personal pan pizza back in the day. And I know they're all the same, but you know, just the little pan pizza looks kind of cute. So we're gonna start with this guy. I'm just gonna come right in. Let's see if I can slice that peach in half right there. Oh yeah, get down to the crust. See if I can get this guy up without burning me. 
because that seems to be the common problem. I keep burning myself on these and this is still really hot. Let me tell you what, I'm gonna set that down for a minute. I might even get me a plate. All right, got my little hot bite of pizza. I know, you're supposed to wait. It's hot, piping hot. It's fresh out of the oven, or in this case, fresh out of the smoker. But you know what? I'm hungry. So let's see how this guy tastes. Not bad. Ooh, find you something else, hold on. That's right, can't have pizza without beer. And we've got a lemon kugel peach and we've got a Jack Daniels Southern Peach. So we're gonna compare these two and see which one tastes better as well. Cause, well, the peachy pizza is pretty good on its own. Let's see, we'll start out with the traditional peach beer. And yes, it is a beer. It's not a sour or any of that. It is a legit, oh my God, it's a beer. And for those of you who have been watching me for a while and go, dude, you're blowing your diet. Yeah, this is my cheat week over Christmas and Thanksgiving and things like that. I gotta take a break every once in a while, so why not make pizza, right? Look at there, nice bubbly, nice color. Let's have a sip. Not bad, it's definitely got a good peach aftertaste to it. It's your typical light Pilsner beer type deal, just with a little peach thrown in at the end, so works out really well with pizza. Now let's try our Southern Peach, that's right. Twist off. I know, fancy stuff right there. Pinky out, cheers. Oh, this is Kool-Aid. <laughs> There's no alcohol or beer taste or nothing. This, if you like a peach Kool-Aid or something like that, that will get you in trouble. I do know one thing, I'm gonna be eating me a whole lot of pizza. I'm gonna have me a few beverages. And at the end of it, I know I'm gonna know that Bigfoot is real. So y'all take care. I got a little bit of work to do right here. Cheers. From there, we're going to about a heavy tea tablespoon. Hit the fifth, boy. I wanna to talk to you about a little something. Well, so does the dog apparently. <laughs> 